Well, I should have figured out what's going on. Why this did... Why... Okay, sorry about some of them that had extra pieces and extra things that didn't make sense. Sorry about that. That was... I'm trying to figure out this new... This, um... Thing. How to record all my stuff. And now I know what it does. I'm just... You know... I'm just playing around. Okay, let me get back to unconstructed, but un unregenerated. Um, part seven, page twenty five of this first edition book. I'll take my stand by twelve uh, Southerners, and this article is by Mister Random. Ransom. Ransom. Yeah, Ransom. Yeah, his name is uh John Crow Ransom. His name sounds so familiar. I know there's a lot of uh doing family history it gets crazy. Oh yeah. By the name by the way, my name is Loretta Nash and you are listening to the Loretta Nash show. Or Wars Block. Okay, let me get back to this story. I only got yeah, a couple more pages and my horrible reading. Um I'll go ahead and finish it out. And then you know I'm gonna do some little go off on a rabbit trail. Or as one person says, just go off everywhere. Okay, the unifying effects bound between these geo, uh, geophysically diverse elements of public opinion will be the clean-cut policy that the rural life of America must be defended and the world made safe for the farmers. My friends are often quick quick to tell me that against the power of the industrial spirit no such hope can be entertained but there but there are some protests in these days ra raising against the industrial ideal even from the centers where its grips are the stoutest and this would indicate that our human intelligence is being again to uh, is beginning again to assert itself for of course this is all the truer of the european countries which have required less of a bitter schooling of experience Thus, Dean Ingu, Ingu, in, Ingi, thus Dean Ingi declares himself in his romances lectures on the ideal of the idea of progress. And it's got a big quote. So, oh, gotta read it. I believe this dissatisfaction. This satisfaction with things as we are is caused not only by the failure of 18th century civilization, but partially also by its progress. No longer, we no longer wish to progress on those lines of, those lines if we could. Our um apocalyptical yeah apocalyptical dream is vanishing into thin air it may be that the industrial revolution which began at the reign of george the third has produced mo uh, much of its fruits and has had its day we may have to look forward to a change as 
is imaginated by Antoine France. Anto, yeah, Anto France at the end of his life, his Isle of the Pilgrim, Pig, Pingrims, Isle of the Pingrims, Pingrims, uh, Pingrims, Pingrims, uh, Pingrims. I get the southern accent. Okay, Isle of the Pilgrims, when after the orgy of revolution. Revolution and destruction, we will slide back into the quite rural life of the every modern rural life of a the early modern period. If so, the author of the revolution will have to cut their own throats, for there can be no great manufacturing towns in such a society their disappearance will not will be no great loss the race will be tried and the race will be will have tried a great experiment and will have rejected it as unsatisfactory now the thought walked in my head is Detroit. Well, uh, that's just the thought ran right into my head. This book is 1930. Detroit was the last thing I remember in my history. Uh, okay, let me get back to this the this article. Okay, the South has and now, uh, sorry, and now we're going into this Green New Deal. And stuff, and oh, it's weird. Okay, the South has an important part to play, if she will, in such a counter revolution. But what pitiful service has the inept Southern politician for many years been rendering to the cause? Their southern lord loyalty at Washington has rarely had any more imaginative manifest manifestation than to scramble vigorously for a southern share in the federal pie. They will have to be um miraculously enlightened. I get it. I get quickly behind my depths in sounding these political possibilities. I will utter one last frantic thought. No southerner ever dreams of heaven or pictures his utopia on earth without providing room for the Democratic Party. <laughs> That's true. It is, is it really possible that the De Democratic Party can be held to a principle and that the principle can now be defined as agrarian, conserv uh, conservative, or anti-industrial? It may not be possible after all. If it provides possible, if it proves possible, then the South may yet be rewarded for a submutual affection that has persisted in the face of many betrayals. Interesting. Okay. And now it goes into this next uh, article, but. I don't want to read it right now. Um, but that was interesting. And most of it is uh, pretty much what's going on now. And you got to think this is history, guys. I'm reading a book as a history. Um, of course, it's written 
after World, uh, after World War One, nineteen thirties, and of course, uh, it's written by Southern gentlemen that were around. That probably their life was influenced uh, by the Civil War, or they heard their grandfather say something. Because I'm going by what mine did because uh I know my great great I think she's double great grandmother she was supposed to have been born around that time I never met her I don't know if my mama ever met her and her last name was Gahagan huh a funny name Gahagan Yeah. Was that Gahagan? Yeah. Yeah, it was G Gahagan. And that's uh, weird. Okay, whoa. Um, yeah, um, you're listening to the Loretta Nash show or Lord's blog. Um, uh, fill up the time. Um, I'm an artist. Or as it says, a Southern American artist, hence the accent. And that's why I wanted to read this book right here out loud um, by 12 Southerners. I think I heard something on the radio um, about somebody. Yeah, it was one of the, the guys on the radio talking about that uh, somebody said he wanted to hear the other guy as mama read things with her southern accent my accent kind of fluctuates sometimes that's what my friend said she's from england when i was in college uh it fluctuated sometimes and uh, she couldn't figure out where i was from and if i watch an uh one show i seem to mimic things a lot that's what I do. I mimic and I pick up things if I've been around stuff too much. Maybe that's why I sound like I have a, a speech impediment. Is I for a while my husband, uh, bless his soul, had a very pronounced speech impediment. Very pronounced. I can understand him fine and everything and uh. It was caused by, um, apparently he had cerebral palsy in there. And, uh, this pandemic kind of took him, took him. He, cause, you know, being special needs, uh, all I hear in the news that the ones with special needs, they like to see people's mouths and with everybody wearing a mask, you know, uh, they can't see people's mouths. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm just rambling to try to fill up the time here on this before I start this new article in this. Um, I'll make my stand book. Um, it's a nice, pretty book. Very in really good condition. Only condition, bad condition it is. It is light faded a little bit. I don't remember the library over here having um very many much windows uh our library uh got a new built a new library and i remember the old library and it's not in use right now uh, i think they were say, thinking about converting it into something i can't remember what it was um here in uh, of all places, West Memphis, Arkansas, uh, um, and you are listening to the Loretta Nash Show or Laura's Blog, and I'm going to see you in um, in a bit for the next uh, article in this book, which has a lot of articles about and it's written by 12 southerners and 
uh, figured out why it does weird stuff. And I'll see you in a bit.